This is a podcast by Wellhouse Church, where we take a closer look and dig a little deeper into this week's sermon. What's going on, Bible nerds? How y'all doing? We are talking about uh, the last half of Acts 24 and the first half of Acts 25, so let's take a closer look. Yeah, this is um, a very interesting bit of the story that we get about these uncertain political waters that Paul finds himself in because you know Paul gets taken before the governor Felix because the Jews have this plot to kill him so the Mm. tribune sends him to the governor and then the governor can't figure out what he wants to do and so he's just he just leaves Paul in custody and the last place we left off was in 23, then he, Felix, ordered the centurion to keep him in custody, but to let him have some liberty and not to prevent any of his friends from taking care of his needs. So Paul is good chilling in some waters of uncertainty, but he's still, his life hangs in the balance of what could happen to him at any moment. Yeah. And he, remember, he's done nothing wrong. Right. This is unjust. Verse 24, this is where we pick up today. Some days later, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him speak concerning faith in Christ Jesus. And as he, Paul, discussed justice, self-control, and the coming judgment, Felix became frightened and said, Go away, for the present, when I have an opportunity, I will send for you. At the same time, he hoped that money would be given him by Paul, and for that reason, he used to send for him very often and converse with him. So, Felix is a man of power that's intrigued by this Paul character. Can't really get a good read on him, unsure about, you know, the whole situation. And so he summons him up from the holdings, the jail, the barracks, whatever you want to call them. He summons him up, and he'll have these conversations with him. And whenever Paul has these conversations with him, Felix, the governor, is like, hey, maybe he's going to try to give me money to get out of here. Paul's not doing that. Yeah. Paul's not offering money to get out of there. Paul's just chilling in faith. This is what it means to be a person of faith, to be living in your circumstances. He's not in terrible conditions, right? He has liberties. His friends are taking care of his needs. He's in good thing. He's getting to come up and talk to the, you know, talk to the governor. He's fine. But whenever Paul gets the opportunity to talk to the governor about the way of Jesus, that is what he is talking to him about, concerning faith in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Luke records that Paul's speeches are three things. Justice, self-control, and the coming judgment. I think if you asked Paul, Paul would say that those are elements of the gospel. Sure. That Jesus' death and resurrection is the ultimate example of justice, that it is the ultimate justice, It is the dispensation of righteousness in Paul's own words, right? We are clothed in the righteousness of Jesus. Um, I think self-control, right? One of the fruits of the Spirit, I think Paul would say, that is what we are doing as we fight temptations to manifest our divine likeness in inappropriate ways. I think Paul would say self-control is the measurement through which we do that. And the coming judgment, against those who commit injustice and unrighteousness. Yeah. I think that is a presentation of the gospel. And Felix is intrigued by this message. Now, he's ulteriorly motivated because he wants money. Paul's not offering that. And so that's the situation that Paul finds himself in right now. And this is what Luke tells us. After two years of this had passed. Yeah. Two years of Paul being in prison for absolutely no reason as a political puppet. 
After two years had passed, Felix was succeeded, succeeded by Portius Festus. And since he wanted to grant the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. Paul is a political pawn. Yeah. Living this life and preaching the gospel to the governor. So when I think Paul can talk to us about faith and some of his letters, what does it mean to have faith? I think he's a dude I want to listen to. Sure. Because I think more than me ever, Paul understands what it is to literally have your life hang in the balance, waiting for God to move. Yeah. Um, and to live faithfully through that. I think that is what Paul is demonstrating here for us for at least two years. Yeah. I need you to think about that, people. What could you do with two years of your life? A lot. A ton, right? Yeah, two years. We, we don't talk about it like it's a long time, but it really is. Get an associate's degree. Yeah. You can literally get an associate's degree in two years. You can get a certificate that can get you a job that gets you that makes a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, there's a lot that you can do for progress in two years. For sure. And Paul was relegated to sitting in prison and writing letters. Yeah. Now, what Paul didn't know is some of those letters will be read for thousands and thousands of years. Sure. Um, they're called the New Testament. Yeah. But Paul has had enough. Paul knows he's being used as a political pawn. Paul also knows that he's a Roman citizen, and that grants him certain rights. Mm -hmm. So, picking up in chapter 25. Three days after Festus had arrived in the province, he went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem, where the chief priests and the leaders of the Jews gave him a report against Paul. They appealed to him and requested as a favor to them against Paul to have him transferred to Jerusalem. They were, in fact, planning an ambush to kill him along the way. Yeah. I cannot express this enough. This is the church that Paul continues to profess to be a part of. Sure. These are, Paul will say these are his people. Paul models what Martin Luther further models for us, that you don't leave your faith tradition until they kick you out. Yeah. And that is what happened with both of them. And so they want to kill him. They are planning an ambush to kill Paul, and that is why they are asking for him to be transferred. Verse 4. Festus replied that Paul was being kept at Caesarea and that he himself intended to go there shortly. So, he said, let those of you who have the authority come down with me, and if there's anything wrong about the man, let them accuse him. So now, the Emperor Festus shows up. Or, sorry, Festus shows up. And he first goes into Jerusalem, and the Jews show up, and they say, hey, this guy, Paul, that's being held down in Caesarea. Yeah, he's ours. We want you to grant us a favor and give him back to us. We want you to transfer him down to Jerusalem. Um, and they're secretly in the back of their mind thinking, we're going to kill this fool. Mm -hmm. In the transport, just straight, you know, jailbreak style, except mm -hmm. we're going to assassinate him. Yeah. Um, and Festus, he's not new to the game. He's been informed, right? There's been briefings. Um, he knows that Paul's a political pawn right now. Mm -hmm. He says, no, 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 no. I'm fixing to go down to Caesarea, and I'm going to talk to this guy. Any of you that want to come, join me. Come on, let's go. Let, let's, let's set this stuff out. So, verse 6. After he had stayed among them, not more than eight or ten days. Eight or ten days. Yeah. Um, they are not real concerned about Paul. No. Paul is a political pawn. Paul is a chess piece in a much larger political game because 
Festus stayed amongst the Jews in Jerusalem for eight to ten days. They had eight to ten days worth of more business to work out outside of Paul. Yeah. Paul's just one of the many pieces that they have going in this political game. Sure. He goes down to Caesarea. The next day, he took his seat on the tribunal and ordered Paul to be brought. When he arrived, the Jews who had gone down from Jerusalem surrounded him, bringing many serious charges against him, which they could not prove. So they're just hurling out false accusations, false crimes. Verse 8. Paul said in his defense, I have in no way committed an offense against the law of the Jews or against the temple or against the emperor. So Paul understands that the Jews are bringing it, but that his citizenship is actually holding him. The Romans are holding him. So he says, I've not committed anything against any of you people. And you've held him there for two years. Yeah. Verse 9. But Festus, wishing to do the Jews a favor, asked Paul, Do you wish to go up to Jerusalem and be tried there before me on these charges? So Festus now says, Hey, do you want to go to Jerusalem? That's where they want you to go. Like, he doesn't say that, but that's what he's thinking. Do you want to go to Jerusalem um, and be tried there before me on these charges? Do you want to go home to your people? Do you want to go home and be tried there? I'll sit. Do you want to go? That's his question. What do you think Paul's going to say, Clayton? All that you know about Paul, all that we've talked about citizenship, what do you think Paul's going to say? I feel as if Paul would want to go back to Jerusalem um, because he's Jew first. Verse 10. Paul said, I'm appealing to the emperor's tribunal. This is where I should be tried. I have done no wrong to the Jews, as you very well know. Now, if I am in the wrong and have committed committed something for which I deserve to die, I'm not trying to escape death, but if there is nothing to their charges against me, no one can turn me over to them. I appeal to the emperor. Hmm. Then Festus, after he had conferred with his council, replied, You have appealed to the emperor. To the emperor you will go. Paul says, Nah. I don't trust these fools no more. Look at them. Hurling these false accusations against me, making up lies. I'm in here preaching about justice and the lack of corruption and self-control, and y'all out here trying to murder me. Yeah. Nah. I've lost faith in the institution. Let me try this other one. Yeah. I'm going to go up a step. I'm going to call. Let me go to the emperor. Paul knows. Paul's an educated guy. Paul knows what his rights are as a Roman citizen. He's been there for two years. Sure. Festus is a new guy in town and says, hey, what do you want to do? I can sit on this, but do you want to go to Jerusalem? Paul says, nah, I'm going to one-up you. I want to go to the emperor. So Festus says, all right, let's do it. And notice in Paul's petition, his prayer, he says, Now, if I'm in the wrong and have committed something for which I deserve to die, I am not trying to escape death. There's an episode of Pints and Perspective that just came out last Thursday um, where we talk about the experience of death. And in there, Adam asks the question, um, how do I make peace with my own death? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and I said the answer was because of hope. Paul is modeling that it's because of faith and hope. Hope for a coming judgment. Yeah. Hope that the unjust will be judged. Hope sure. that justice will prevail. Hope that goodness and godness go hand in hand. And that righteousness of Jesus will prevail as the judge. And that there will be no more wrong. Sure. Hope. Hope for something greater than this. Nonsense. Um, And Paul thinks, unfortunately, his best bet at moving forward in his faith and hope is not with the church. 
It's with the government. And he's right because the church wants to kill him. Yeah. The church wants to kill him and is trying to play political games for advancement. Hmm. Sounds pretty similar to uh, some religious institutions that I can think of in our contemporary world. Mm-hmm. That's for free, though. Um, verse 13. After several days had passed, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea to welcome Festus. Since they were staying there several days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man who was left in prison by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me about him and asked for a sentence against him. I told them that it was not the custom of the Romans to hand over anyone before the accused had met the accusers face to face and had given an opportunity to make a defense against the charge. So when they met here, I lost no time, but on the next day took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought. When the accusers stood up, they did not charge him with any of the crimes that I was expecting. So basically what we have here is Festus, the new governor, is giving an update to King Agrippa about what's going on with this cat named Paul. And he says, look, when I showed up, all this is what's happened. And then when I show up to the trial, I sit down. These Jews don't accuse him of any of the crimes I was expecting. Instead, they had certain points of disagreement about him, about their own religion, and about a certain Jesus who had died, but whom Paul asserted to be alive. They don't get it. They're yep. just like, they, they're, this is just a religious spat. Like, they're just talking about their own stuff. Verse 20. Since I was at a loss, Festus is like, I don't know what the hell this is. Look at this. That I think what Festus is doing, if I can be honest, is I think he's going to the king going, look at this cluster that Felix left me with, guy. Mm-hmm. Listen to this nonsense. Verse 20. Since I was at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wished to go to Jerusalem and be tried there on these charges. Verse 21. But when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody, but when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of his imperial majesty, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to the emperor. Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, you will hear him. So Paul's going to take a quick detour, not to the emperor, because Festus is in complete dismay about what is happening. The new governor is in complete dismay of what to do. Yeah. Just at utter loss. No idea. And so the king comes around and he's like, hey, bro, let me tell you this story. And he goes, I don't know what to do. Like, he wants to go to the emperor. And the king says, you know what? I'm intrigued by this too. Let me hear it. And so we're about to see Paul's hearing before King Agrippa, his trial, and how Paul navigates that. uh, Based on the waters that he set in motion. The thing that I want you to understand is that what I think Paul is trying to communicate is that unfortunately the religious system, the religious institution that Paul so dearly loves and continues to want to remain a part of continues to reject them, to reject him, to reject the people of the way. They call it a sect. Um... 
I think you might say Wellhouse Church's journey is quite similar. Mm-hmm. Um, and we still exist unsure of what we're going to do moving forward. We, I think we remain in this place of holding, of not sure how to move forward because the institution and the tradition that we hold to and still want to claim of being Baptist doesn't want us. Yeah. Um, I think this is true for anyone that is LGBTQ and is out to their parents and they were not supportive. Yeah. Religious <clears throat> reasons. I think there are so many people that can empathize with Paul's hurt and harm yeah. at the hands of these people that he went to for life. And they are literally pursuing his death. Sure. Um, I think this is what it means to be a person of faith. I think that it's in these moments where our faith is tested. And Paul's done nothing wrong. It shouldn't be this way. There's a lot of shit that shouldn't happen. This is a broken world. And bad things happen, even to good people, even to godly people. That's what Paul is modeling for us. And faith is, how do you navigate these waters with trust that God is at work for you and for your betterment? That is what it means to live a life of faith. And Paul continues to navigate these waters to the best of his ability with what he can get and grasp within his own limitations as a human. Um, And we get to see him next week make a petition before a king. What I want you to understand about next week is that that petition before a king is proof that sometimes gold can come out of the ashes, that the phoenix can and will rise.